Sean Combs denied bail for the second time in as many days. Just came out, the federal judge, district judge, Andrew Carter, said no to Puff Daddy's request for release from jail during the pendency of his criminal charges. Now, why is that important? Well, one, at the arraignment, the judge said, I think he's too much of a risk. You know, you know he probably oh. got some money and you know, and some hidden yeah, I Swiss think I think their whole whatever. issue is is they must they must really have something definitive on. Well, him. well, I, I can tell you on the state level, the state normally arrests you and then try the to build a case against you. Yeah. The feds build a case against right. you and First. then arrest you. Yeah, so so they, yeah, they, they got something on they them. Definitely got something on them. You know what I mean? But but man, Pop, Pop was a monster. <laughs> so next video, Diddy fifty million dollar bail package to get out of jail was denied. So let's hear the explanation from at Robert Sparks attorney. $50 million dollar bill $50 package. Million dollar bill package. And that shit was denied. If they deny $50 million, that means they want that ass. Yep. <laughs> At this point blank. Literally. <laughs> Did it? They, they, want, they want that ass right there, boy. It's Fish Jump Podcast. Oh. Let's go. Sean Combs denied bail for the second time in as many days. Just came out. The federal judge, district judge, Andrew Carter, said no to Puff Daddy's request for release from jail during the pendency of his criminal charges. Now, why is that important? Well, one, at the arraignment, the judge said, I think he's too much of a risk. Puff Daddy's team, his criminal defense attorneys, did a nice job, and what do I mean by that? They knew the indictment was coming, so what they did is they offered the prosecution a bail package. They raised what they call a bail package. First, you usually try to negotiate that with the prosecutor's office to say, I'm giving you this package. So it means with this package, we're trying to assure i.e. the judge and or the prosecution that he's not going to flee the jurisdiction before the trial. It's designed that if he doesn't comply with his pretrial release, i.e. if he does abscond, try to run, try to jump on a plane, he has to forfeit everything he puts up in collateral. What is the collateral here? Well, it was a $50 million package. In the last six months, the idea is that he paid off the Miami mortgage on his mansion. So right there he has a home that he put up for collateral. The report also talks about that he had family members co-signed. He put up cash. He was willing to undertake voluntary drug tests, home confinement, and a visitor log every day. So the idea is if he didn't comply, they take the 50 million. A lot of people are going to say the guy's worth hundreds of million. What's 50 going to do? But we're talking about 50 million in cash. Different story. But the big takeaway from the judge's ruling is it wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough for two reasons. One, obstruction of justice to witness tampering. That's a huge statement by a federal judge. He's concerned that Sean Combs and or his team is going to try to provide some type of undue influence on the witnesses that are set to testify against them. That goes to the sex trafficking. That goes to the horrendous sexual battery cases and the victims trying to get to them. Remember, in a criminal prosecution as a defense attorney, if you have bad facts, bad evidence, it's not going to be he said, she said here. It's going to be a he versus she, she, she. It's a criminal enterprise. So what a defense attorney wants to do is he wants to put time between the indictment and the trial, hoping that the state, or in this case, the federal government's case, falls apart. The more time that you can put between the two, maybe witnesses disappear, maybe witnesses recount, maybe somebody's getting paid off. There's a lot of issues and may run a public relations campaign to try to sway a jury that in fact he's the victim, that the federal government is an overreach and they can't tie this to him. But I'll tell you when that becomes very difficult to run that playbook. It's when your client's sitting in jail during the trial because you're not out there pleading the innocence. He's not being seen in public. There is no good deeds, public relations that he can do. It's no coincidence that they brought him back to New York to surrender. It's no coincidence that you see him in a park. That's all public relations. That's all by design. But the idea is huge victory in terms of a federal prosecutor. And it's going to expedite the case. Why? Remember, I just said we want to put time between the arraignment and the trial. Well, when your client's sitting in jail and looking at those cell walls, he wants out of there. He knows his only chance is to either strike a plea not going to happen. Or two, got to get to trial as soon as possible. So it kind of turns things up on the head. Now Puff Daddy's team's exceptional lawyers, big time criminal defense guys. But at the end of the day, they're 0 for 2. What I mean 0 for 2 is they try to set up a package to get out on bail and it didn't work with the prosecution or the first judge. And number two, they took it a level to kind of think of it as an appeal. We need to go out, no excessive bail. Judge said no, too big of a risk. So here the judge denying and saying I'm having too much of a concern. A lot of people will say, hold on now, don't we all have a right 
to bail? Well, the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution says, yes, you do. You have a right to not have excessive bail, but the idea is that right is not absolute. And if they find that the public interest or public safety is greater than that, we're concerned witness tampering, evidence destruction, the judge can hold you as pretrial confinement. Here, things just went bad to worse for Puff Daddy. He's going to sit in jail until this case is tried. Very difficult, very talented attorneys that he has working for him, but they're literally going to have to be working with his client from a jail cell. Changes the dynamic. It's a big deal. It's more than just a judge stamping a gavel saying no bail. Here, the judge makes a ruling afraid of witness tampering. Yeah, so Yo, you, you know I don't know if anybody's like been following that. So I'm not like real big on stuff like that. However, because it's such a big case, you can't help but to hear what's going on. And they have definitely been saying he's been calling people. They saw his his phone records. He's been calling witnesses. His phone records indicate. So my thing is, is like everybody has their day in court. We We don't know what's really going on. And at the end of the day, it's like. Who am I to say or judge to say that somebody belongs somewhere? But also at the end of the day, we know he's been in the music industry for years. I'm pretty sure not everything that he owns is in his name. I'm pretty sure. So he the has, things that he did he own, could, he already sold like the exactly. Jets. Exactly. So therefore, he could have collateral on his kids' <clears throat> yeah. names. Exactly. So therefore, yeah, you can sell, you can pay the mortgage on your house, but let's just say you got a house in each of your kids' names. They won't know that it's technically his, or let's just say, you know, all his kids got money. Yeah, but you never know what so kind of offshore accounts that. or, you know, hidden accounts that he may have. Like, he definitely mm. has, you know, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure he has things that can get him somewhere. <laughs> you know, you know, he probably so. got some money and you know, and some hidden. Yeah, I Swiss think I think account, their whole whatever. issue is, is they must they must really have something definitive on. Well, him. well, I, I can tell you. On the state level, the state normally arrests you and then try the to build a case against you. Yeah. The feds build a case against right. you and First. then arrest you. Yeah, so so they, yeah, they, they got something they on them. They definitely got something on them. You know what I mean? But but man, Puff, Puff was a monster. Well, you know, I'm not going to. Puff had to be a monster. You know what I mean? I mean that is a type of guy who would tell you, oh, you won't work for me and I'm going to pay you whatever I want to pay you. Oh, no, nah, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to work for you. I'm a. I'm yeah, a go somewhere else. Oh yeah. Well, like Pete, this. That power yeah, I got you on home. film doing this right here. Oh <laughs> now, now you robbing me. <laughs> That's Poppy. Well, you think about it. He did bad business with uh, the locks. The girl from uh, Danity Kane, Aubrey O'Day. She said he, he did bad business. He do that. He did he bad, bad business, business all around with Craig Mack to the point that uh, he he offered to pay for Craig Mack's funeral, and the family declined it. Uh, Mace. Like you hear all this stuff about the people he did dirty, <clears throat> excuse me. And you just think about it, that's the, that's on the surface. That's what we do know. Yeah, so that's exactly. what you're yeah. what don't goes know. Around, comes it's around. like you. How do you not believe? Like I, Diddy was anybody that knows me know. Like the guy that I looked up to as a kid was Diddy. He was dancing. Well, you know what? Well, cool. well, let me so tell you. Like, but also, you, you know, they've been saying for years. I'll be sure been trying to say. You know, uh, been trying to talk his piece about that. Yeah. And they say he was he was silent. And well, I want to touch about what you said. At that time, we all looked at because we thought Diddy was cool. I know. I thought Diddy was cool. Right. Yeah, I mean, Diddy, well, he was a cool dude yeah, in the back of the video. That's because we don't yeah, know him man, personally. Was, but <laughs> this sounds like he tops R. Kelly. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think they both on the same level, but it's just like they said uh, Quincy might be testifying against him. That's his son. What? Well, it's not his son, but. Well, yeah, because that's I'll be sure son. Right. So, so it's, it's like if he's if he's allegedly because uh, I don't mm -hmm. know I, I heard some rumblings about it but if he allegedly is going to testify that just tells you like imagine the stuff those kids saw wow oh yeah what do you think about Kim Porter yeah her her mysterious death death, death of yeah. ammonia no the um <clears throat> I think the thing that yeah but got, I heard that she had a memoir yeah, yeah. well her, yeah her girlfriend her yeah, fr a friend of hers the one that they just supposedly released leaked is it. not the one that she was writing. It was changed. Well, they, she also had one where they saying that uh, she was friends with this girl that was Jay Z's mistress. Yeah, and yeah. Right I before didn't she was going to go tell her story, she died. Yep, I heard about that. And she was going. They said that she she had, I guess, like a notes or whatever about what that girl was going to release too. So it just goes down a rabbit hole. And I think to be in Hollywood, you just got to be aware though. Like you have to have some kind of. To be top, you saying a, a weirdo? Like you got to be in the. In the it's, to me, Hollywood is like a like a big college or a big uh, fraternity or sorority. 
you got to just be able to fit in. And I'm talking about to be well, mega. Well, I'm willing to bet you. I mean, we don't know for sure. I want to bet you. That boy probably got dirt on politicians. Exactly. Everybody. That's what Judges. Yeah. Of course, everybody. actors. Because all actors, athletes, all of them was partying with Diddy. Right. You know what I mean? Diddy was. You know what I mean? They, ain't they no party like a Diddy day. party because right. the Diddy party don't stop. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So like I'm saying, at the end of the day, if he was doing it, who else was doing it with them? Because why you not being tried to? But that's the thing. That's the same thing I said about R. Kelly. There's no way in the world. Uh, Pimp C said it. Pimp C said, I want to go do a song with R. Kelly. He walked in the, uh, he walked in the studio. He said, R. Kelly sitting there. He's a, he's a, he's, you could tell these are little girls. And he's like, yo, what the, what the F is going on in here? He's like, no, I'm out. And so it's like, at the end of the day, we know R. Kelly, he was traumatized as a kid. Yeah. It happened to him. So, you know, hurt people hurt people. How are y'all other grown ass people in the room with him? And you see him come in with somebody that's 13, 14, and you just like this. Oh, so yeah, we go, uh, our cue, cue, cue it up. Without yeah. asking any yeah. questions. I, I, I believe, yeah, yeah, we're going to do that. Like, how you how you just, yeah. just going on with your life? You see him there. So, same <laughs> like thing with nothing. Diddy. Uh, bro, if, if Diddy, if Diddy, yo, yo, bro, listen, I understand the girls is here. Why we got all this baby on? We don't need a thousand bottles, bro. You're doing too much. Got that GHB. Yeah. I, I, now, man, I'll, slipping no man. GHB, is that like a ghetto hood burger? I don't know what that is. I don't want no parts of it. <laughs> Get me out of here. Ghetto hood burger. Get me out of here. I, I, bro, you're doing too hey, much. Like, hey, like, hey, like, hey, take a sip. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. <laughs> you just said you was wrestling with Usher in the bed over cornflakes? Bro, no, take, we, yo, come on, we got to talk, We ain't doing that. You, you, you <laughs> saying, <laughs> saying some weird stuff. Hold on, so let's go, let's go to a comment. So first comment from Christina Edwardson. Diddy was working with the devil, and now the devil is done with it. Mm. Okay, Pastor, are we here? You got to get. I mean, it, it, <laughs> the devil one is due. You know, what I mean? man. Hold let's go. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Kathy says, "Thank God the judge isn't swayed by Diddy and by who Diddy is." Yeah, because you and got a lot of them. The, they they threatened the previous, so they weren't able to let it happen again. Or buy a judge, because you know his money could buy buy his freedom too. No, a federal judge almost impossible. Hmm. Um, because remember, see his thing. He was he was indicted. So in a, a sealed indictment, there is no judge, no jury, or nothing like nah, that. Yeah, Everything was afterwards. sealed. Nobody don't know nothing. Mm. And then once a the judge said, "Yeah, go get that ass," mm -hmm. <laughs> they suiting up <laughs> and they going to get that ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, he like bring that ass here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nah. So That's too much. When he first beat the gun charge back, that was that was a state charge. That that gun the gun situation with him and J Lo and yeah. Shine. You know what I mean? That was a state thing. That was probably easier to be because he could just pay people yeah. off, which I think he did. Couple he gave million. Shine a couple. Uh, he had a, like a million dollars or a couple of million dollars for him when he got out of jail. But a federal? No. Yeah. They're uh, big dogs. Let me tell you something. Fed have a 96% conviction. I think it went up. Wow. I think it's like 97 point something now. Feds <laughs> don't play. If, if the feds if they, don't if, 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 as soon as they show up, just be like, you know what? <laughs> you got me. Uh, I need y'all to give me some 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 of my books now, because I ain't coming out. Listen, they will wait. They will wait years yes. before they come for that ass. Yeah. Oh wow! But they when they when they get that case, oh they coming for that ass. So Turquavion, you selling that weed outside? <laughs> they don't give a good goddamn about you. They looking for your boss's boss's your boss. boss's boss's boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? they'll come. They'll come get you just to make you flip. Right. You know what I mean, they, so let's, right. let's go to one more comment. So one more comment from Deneen. Deneen says. If he could pay fifty million a bell, how you know he got millions offshore and could easily flee? Yeah, see, that's what I said. That's why they deny and all different types of collaterals that's not in his name. But I mean, I'm think thinking. about it though. It ain't the money they want. Fifty million? No, I'm not to, talking the about state? the money, but the money is no. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about him to build up that that bell package, yeah, right? Yeah, they don't. Want, I think because they want that. Especially for yeah. considering he has his own airplane, he can go wherever he wants. 